Welcome, everybody, to the next level. My name is Brian Daniels. I'm joined by my good buddy, Josh Shaver. What's going on, Josh? Hey, well, how's it going, bud? Oh, it's, it's going, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so on this episode, we are going to talk about um, Jason David Frank. Jason David Frank yeah. was the green Power Ranger, white Power Ranger, several other Power Rangers, several other characters. Red twice, black. Yeah. There you go. Uh, depending on what you consider canon or not, at what point in time he was Shredder's right hand man. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're going to be talking about him today because he unfortunately passed away last month. Um, he actually took his own life. Yeah. And uh, we want to get into a topic about that, about mental illness. We want to talk about um, him as a person, you know, mm-hmm. and everything else in between. Um, now I know, um, so I obviously became a power Rangers fan when it first came on back in the nineties yeah. and, uh, the original show. Mm-hmm. And honestly, for me, it's the original show that I like more than anything else. I know there's people out there that they still watch the, they still watch power yeah. Rangers, they still follow power Rangers, uh, from all of their iterations. There's many different iterations. There's many different people who have played a power ranger, but for me, it will always be the, uh, the core group of power rangers, and um, that I that I am more so a fan of of any of the other ones. I, I don't yeah. really follow the shows anymore. I haven't. I think I stopped watching. Actually, watching the show when it was like Space Rangers or some crazy like that. Uh, that's that's probably about when I quit watching it too, because yeah. it just like it got too different. You know, um, yeah. it was just one of those things that it was just like, oh man, what. Well, this isn't even the same show anymore because <laughs> uh, yeah. Tommy eventually stepped down and gave the leadership role to another dude entirely. So it was like, yeah, I don't know any of these people. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out. Peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's about when I, that's about when I stopped too was mm-hmm. I think like the, the command center got destroyed and they like took off into space or something crazy like that. And then that's yeah. when, and then that's when they just did the space Rangers and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I, I only watched the uh, original movie. I did not watch the um, I did not watch Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. I actually still have it to this day. Yeah. I, seen the Turbo <laughs> I, movie. I have is, I have I have the OG Power Rangers movie still on right. the NHL VHS. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, man, I mean, Power Rangers was a big deal. I mean, let's let's think uh, about it. We, yeah. we had an episode where we talked about the 90s and like all the things we grew up mm-hmm. watching, and, you know, like you had the Fox uh, shows. Uh, in the mornings, Jeez, Fox shows that's, rock. And like Fox Kids was like where it was at. It's, you had yeah. Power Rangers, you had Ninja Turtles, you had the X, the OG X Men cartoon, mm-hmm. you had the the amazing Spider Man cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, everything that you could think of that you really got into as a kid was on that channel. Yeah, uh, at the time. And so, uh, but for Power Rangers, you could connect with them more because they were younger people. Although they were a lot, they were quite teenagers a bit older than attitude, we were, but they were teenagers with yeah. attitude yeah. and. You know, um, a lot of people don't realize this. I don't think I realized this later on until mm-hmm. I was a little bit older. But uh, the show actually is the American version of Super Sente, which is the OG, yeah. OG Power Rangers that was originally. Zulu Ranger. And so all the most of the fighting scenes, the dragon, the, 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 Zoi, mm-hmm. the Zords that you see, all that stuff, Rita and all those characters, that's all Japan. So mm-hmm. they basically took a, a live action show and like dubbed it into an Americanized version. That's the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers you they see. They cleaned now. it up quite a bit too. And they did. Oh yeah, because it was a lot dark. It was really dark and twisted. First, uh, <laughs> Bel- so so in in the Japanese Z Ranger, uh, Rita's name is Beldora, and she's an evil witch, right? Yeah. First thing she does is goes to Earth and kills a kid yeah. on screen. It's like dark. just like you know what? We're we're going big. We're going heavy. Because yeah. that was like. I want to say season four or five, yeah, uh, for them, yeah, was Something was like what that. we know as Mighty Morphin, yeah. Because um, I've actually, it's 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 crazy that this is all going down in the time span it is because um, Tokushatsu, which is um, a channel on one of the free apps, and now that I'm on the spot, I don't remember which one it is, <laughs> but. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's run by Shout Factory, and oh, they okay. just kind of go on and cycle through all the different Tokusotsu shows. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, you've got the different Super Sentais, you've got the, the the common writers, you've got the Ultramans, 
And I want to say it was last weekend. Rachel was working like all sorts of crazy overtime and they had her coming in on Sunday. Uh-huh. And I was at home alone. The kids were gone. And I just kind of laid in bed and watched the majority of show two, you know, Sentai G Ranger, whatever it's yeah. called, you know. It, it yeah. was awesome, man. And, yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah. And then, you know, I've been working from home. So I, I have my TV on in the background and I've just been kind of like listening to the uh, OG Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And nice. I just kind of took it all in at once and it was like, yeah, no, this really makes me feel, you know, certain ways. For sure. Um, I mean, and, the thing about yeah. the thing about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers too, what makes it, I think, the best of all of the Power Ranger shows is that fucking music hits so hard. Like, dude, dude like that was the that was like when you're a little kid and you're like maybe like what fucking like seven or eight years old and you're like hearing that shit. You hear that yeah. music from a mile away, dude. You're running. It's like, yeah, dude. Like that's that's just like that that stands today as probably still one of the absolute best kids like TV show intros mm-hmm. of like all time. All I mean, time, dude. So so good. I so, actually yeah, Ninja Turtles theme, of course. Yeah, written by Chuck. Right. Lee, which is great. I was I was actually sitting here the other day with a buddy of mine and uh, he came over and it was I had just finished up working and I was watching Power Rangers and we were just kind of he watched an episode with me. Uh-huh. I said, you know, you know what made this so badass was the music. Like this is all kind yeah, of like man. not as great, but the music is what makes it dope. The music is what Absolutely. makes me being thirty four years old still sitting here going, he kicked that pig in the mouth. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, the music was so damn good, man. Like yeah. not just the intro theme alone, but like uh, the fight songs were good. Uh, mm-hmm. The little dragon, the dragon zord, dr- dragon dagger call was like cool. You know, they Dude. they got like everything down. <sighs> Yeah, there you go. Am I, am I allowed to play it? Like, oh yeah, do it, man. For it? I don't. You I got think the you, trouble for that. You got the. Yeah, you know, that, that was to call him, and then when he wanted to just shoot shoot the missiles. Yeah. Oh no, wait, that's yeah. the theme song. Okay, that's yeah. the theme song. Hell yeah. And then when he wanted to shoot the missiles, um, it was. Uh... That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I, I yeah, love the, this the, thing. the music, everything about this show was <laughs> was so good. Yeah. And um, of course, uh, you know, you got to liken who your favorite Rangers were and everybody's favorite mm-hmm. Ranger for the most part was the Red Ranger. And then, yeah, Austin then, St. John, Jason, uh, you had no could play by Austin St. John. And then you had uh, none other than Tommy Oliver appear and he he can't he was inserted in to uh, the show. Um, he he ended up the leader. He became the leader. He first was a villain, then he kind of yeah. trans- he transitioned to a good guy, and uh, yeah, he was probably everybody's favorite Power Ranger when when all was mm-hmm. said and done in that in that show. Anyway, I was and, always uh, torn. Yeah, and then he became the White Ranger, and he had Saba mm-hmm. instead of the Dragon Dagger, and mm-hmm. you know he had the White uh, Tiger Zord and all that. Um, but outside the show, let's talk about Jason David Frank. Yeah, the person. absolutely. We- and uh, kind of kind of wanted to set up talking about him and his career and stuff. But um, if you never got to meet Jason David Frank, I had the pl- I had the pleasure of, of getting to meet him. Mm-hmm. Um, he is he was such a one of a kind person. He was like a staple at conventions. Like if you would go to a con, he was there. It was kind of like, okay, like this, this is a good show. Like they got he's here, you know. And um, you know, Jason David Frank was the power ranger like he was the yeah guy. he was the guy that everybody identified everybody, everybody that was a fan of the power rangers identified with mm-hmm. him as he the iconic he yeah he, you know some people i was telling i was talking to raven about this the other day that some people you know when they were a part of a show or a part of a movie they do either one of two things they'll either like hate the fan base and not really get into the fandom and just kind of mm-hmm. are there for the money and then there's people like Jason David Frank who they they embolden themselves. They become the fan base. They become mm-hmm. one with the thing. Fan base, yeah. And he was by far and away the person that did that very thing. Was he mm-hmm. took it upon himself because he knew he knew how popular he was to the fans, and he knew what he meant to the fans. <clears throat> but the thing is, is a lot of people don't realize what the fans meant to him because they yeah. meant a lot to him. A lot. And I've uh, it, it's still weird to me that he's gone. 
um yeah you know, that he that he that he passed and then the way that he passed away too which we'll get into mm-hmm. that um but uh you know he was only 49 years old when he died yeah which uh, is which, hard to believe which is way too young for anybody to die shape. and he was in fantastic shape mm-hmm. he uh he did talk about fitness but he didn't like force it down people's throats he was more yeah. into martial arts and his own style of martial arts that he had done he had his own school um, where he would train people and come to train yeah. and he was a big skydiver and mm-hmm. uh, which was obviously seen in the movie where he got mm-hmm. on the board and that was like the very first part of the movie was that which was really cool them all jumping out of the plane, plane um yeah. He was very athletic. He loved. Uh, he he did MMA for a little bit. He he did yeah. fights. Uh, he was rumored to want to fight CM Punk, or CM Punk was trying to get him <laughs> to fight him, and it just it's, never happened. That's actually why I have my autograph shirt up there hanging on the wall. Yeah, I see that is yeah. uh, because of our shared hatred of Philip CM Punk. <laughs> and I really hope that someone eventually, at some point in time, gets to surround to CM Punk and he watches this specific episode so that he knows that I mean it from like the bottom of my heart from Jason <laughs> David Frank. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was always trying to get into a fight with uh, with JDF and it never yeah. happened, of course, because CM Punk would have got w- annihilated by him. Was he, he absolutely real. would have, man? He real. We saw we saw how well CM Punk's fights went when he was in the UFC. I watched him cry on TV. But uh, but at Ugh. the end, but at the end of the day, um, Jason David Frank loved his fans. He mm-hmm. did. Uh, he went above and beyond, probably more than any celebrity has ever went. Yeah. For their fans, mm-hmm. and I had the pleasure of meeting JDF at Wizard World. I think this was back in like 2015. It's been a long time. The one in Indy. The one in Indy. Yeah, it's been a long time. And uh, he, uh, I got to go backstage with him, talk to him for a little mm-hmm. bit, got a photo with him, and uh, I got to see firsthand just how much he loved his fans. I got to cover his mm-hmm. VIP meet and greet, which was cool. And he just was. He was always encouraging. Mm-hmm. He was always trying to bring positivity to people. And he knew that the the range of people that watched Power Rangers was multi generational because you had people that you know like us that have children later, and then they you know mm. showed your kids Power Rangers, and so he knew that like people that grew up watching him are now having their children watch him and grow up with him. Yeah. So the when you would look at the lines of people waiting to go and meet him, it was very uh, multi generational. It was, it was you know, mm. kids that was. As, as young as we were when we first watched the Power Rangers with their adults that were our right. age watching Power Rangers, you know, and stuff. So it was really cool. It was a very feel good thing to see. And I recently saw that on YouTube, people were uploading their cameos that they had got with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know, cam- cameo is a, a service that lets you uh, pay to have a celebrity send you a personalized video. And yeah. so he was like giving people tours of his office and all the cool, like, things he had and like he 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 showed off his original power morpher from the show he still has dude yeah stuff he signed and everything and it was weird because like in the last few months before he passed away he was always talking about and i don't know if maybe he even knew what was going to happen um he's talking about how he wanted to make sure he left things behind and that that things would be preserved when he's gone Mm -hmm. so i don't know if he even in his mind was like at some point uh i'm gonna be at a place where i make a decision and mm-hmm. um, it's it's not a good decision, um, but one that he made and, and you know, ended up taking his own life. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing I wanted to bring up in this show that's important, we don't really get into these kind of discussions here. Uh, you know, we always try to talk about very positive, uplifting stuff, you know, right. things. But this is a very important thing that we can't shy away from, especially with someone so prominent in the pop culture community, so prominent in the um 90s kids era community Mm. things like that people like us that grew up in this time is talking about mental health and uh jason david frank i I, i've been i've been watching a lot of videos of his i stay up pretty late at night and i'll I'll be out there watching some videos of his and he did struggle with depression um he Mm. he had depression i know people are i know that he was having some issues with his marriage uh there was some stuff going on with him and his wife tammy um, yeah. I don't know what happened. You know, we, we could sit here and talk about whose fault it is. It's really nobody's fault. Right. I, I'm not going to sit here and blame his, his, his wife or his ch- children yeah. or 
the, no one to really blame because that's where it gets really bad. And, I, and it, what made me mad was when I was watching these videos is people are so quick to say that it was his wife's fault and stuff. Like, man, y'all don't know what goes on in, in that kind of stuff. And really, it's none of our business to know yeah, <clears throat> that kind of I, stuff. Um, I think what we need to be doing as a fan base is mm-hmm. just uh, lifting each other up in mm-hmm. time because I know for me, it's still hard. It's, it's hit me pretty hard because uh, he was one of my childhood heroes, one of my childhood idols. I looked up to him as a kid. And even after getting the opportunity to meet him, stand beside him, hug him, is it's hard. It's hard that he's gone. And the harder part, too, is the fact that he's gone and he won't be at the convention scenes anymore, which is a big thing yeah. that I cover. And him going to it's it's an empty void that's going to be uh, gone. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the yeah, hard absolutely. part for a lot of people, too, is the fact that he took his own life and. He was the guy that was like, Jesus didn't tap. He had it tattooed on his yeah, arm. Yeah, exactly. Jesus didn't and, tap. And that really struck me. Was I, I, I totally forgot that it's not, like I, it's not like I closely follow JDF on a day-to-day basis, mm-hmm. right? But I was going through some stuff, and I was like, man, I forgot that he had a clothing line called Jesus didn't tap. I'm like, damn, that's mm-hmm. like, that's that's rough. MMA uh, stuff, yeah. All things considered. But what I wanted to go over on this show was, was, was depression and mental illness and how uh, that stuff is no joke, how uh, people um, people different d- deal differently with these things, but more so when it comes to men, because the thing about being a guy is it feels like when you're a guy, you have to always have something to prove to everybody. And, yeah. and there's that testosterone contest and uh, you're not, it's not okay to cry or show emotions or things like that. You're not allowed to do those things as a man. And that is just a big fat load of bullshit because you absolutely are allowed to do those things Mm -hmm. as a guy. And the thing that the the way that society sees it is, uh, you know, especially when you're in a, in a marriage or relationship with a female uh, or whomever, it doesn't really matter is that the guy is supposed to be the one that, uh, that doesn't that takes on all the uh, yeah. takes on all the emotion and the support and we're we're supposed to be the wall for the other person and yet our wall isn't supposed to have any cracks in it and I remember when I let people know about my depression when I first mm-hmm. got diagnosed about it back in 2016 I was going through a lot then you know my wife had just left me uh, I, I had been diagnosed with depression is you find out really fast who actually cares <laughs> about you yeah. and you find out really quick. Uh, and it sucks because when you have other men that tell you, dude, just get over it. You're just having a sad day. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, you're uh, you don't want to look weak. That really sucks to hear, especially when you find out from who it is you're finding that out from. And, I'm, I'm here to tell you guys something. Look, <clears throat> you're not weak. It's, it's okay to have mm-hmm. those times. It's okay to express how you feel. And, and, and it's kind of crazy because I've, because there's been two sides of the coin on this whole thing since JDF took his own life a mm-hmm. month ago. There's people that are saying, well, you know, uh, guys that have, uh, that cry and show motion have low testosterone. Okay. Look, <clears throat> that's a thing. You can have low testosterone. That's a thing. People have yeah. tests can have a te- guys can have a testosterone deficiency, but that doesn't make them any less of a man. Like, and, mm-hmm. and, and then I hear these things like the, the toxic masculinity is a very real thing. If you don't think yeah. it absolutely is, but you hear uh, these terms, alpha male, beta male. And I fucking hate those terms. I hate that men mm-hmm. feel that feel this need to judge other men for their lack of manliness or whatever it fucking is. And that just, that's just really disheartening to hear. And I've even heard it more so after JDF passed away. Some people saying, well, you know, he just uh, showed what kind of man he was or making these really bad comments about him. Mm. Look, you don't know what goes on inside a person's head. Right. You don't know what they're dealing with. And I know that like Jason David Frank is the kind of guy, he would never show that. He would never show that. He Mm. would never do that in a public way because he knows and that's got to you gotta think about it like look at guys like robin williams that passed away took his own life too Mm -hmm. um these are people that are uh, you know i am not a i'm not a big public figure i mean i'm i'm in front of the camera a lot and i'm on social media a lot 
people know who I am. But like, I can't imagine the great weight that it must take on your mental and your psyche when you are a big, well-known person like Jason Day Frank, who knows that the majority of his fan base are younger people at that. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have, you have this thing where you have to be careful of how you act or how you say things because you, you have people that are looking up to you and it's kind of twofold. You're, yeah. you're a guy. So like as a guy, you know, the stigma, because that is a stigma because mental, ha mental illness and mental health have, have stigmas, unfortunately mm -hmm. is as a guy, you know, I just said, it's, it's not okay to cry. It's not socially acceptable. <clears throat> if you start being emotional. You're looked at as, as a, as a quote unquote beta male, which is stupid. Uh, and then you get judged by other men that you have low testosterone, all this bullshit. So like, you know, I don't know if that was ever going through his mind. Maybe it was because I'm sure he knew other guys that were, mm -hmm. you know, fit and strong <laughs> and this shit. And, but then at the, at the time, and then the same token, you know, he's going through a divorce and I know his wife, mm -hmm. you know, him and his wife were either trying to work things out. She says they were trying to work things out, but like, like that's really none of my business. Right. But, um, but then, you know, you have to be a very public facing individual and your face is on everything. And you, you're, you have to, you, you, you don't get to go on camera and be like, well, guys, like, here's what's going on. Like, I'm very severely depressed. I've had, you know, uh, certain type of thoughts. Um, so who knows what was going through his head? Um, my thing is, um, is if you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody, we'll, we'll put in the bottom of this description, uh, the phone number for the national, um, prevention hotline national suicide prevention hotline hmm. we'll put that number in the in the description below because look i am not ashamed to admit that i've had to use it there's some really great people on there that uh, actually care they're not going to judge you and it's not because they're paid to do so they're volunteers a lot of them are hmm. so they get paid to do it and uh, it's a good thing to use because I want to make it very clear. Like if you're a guy watching this right now or whoever you are, it doesn't matter what your gender is. Um, it's okay to open up. You don't have to do it in a very public way. Talk to somebody, go get treatment. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Open up to a friend. If you feel like yeah. you, there's a friend that you can talk to that you're comfortable with. That's, that's a hard part too, is being comfortable because we're not always comfortable uh, about opening us, ourselves up because we're, we're kind of trained as guys. That it's a weakness, right? Yeah. Like you know, we're we're embedded into our head that opening up about our emotions is a weakness. We're just we're dudes. We're not supposed to talk about you know that kind of shit, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I won't forget. Like I woke up and my wife was telling me like Jason David Frank died, and I was like, no way. Like I was like in the bathroom, I was waking up, going to the bathroom, and she's like, yeah, JDF died. And I'm like, well, what happened? Like you know. And then she's like, oh, he took his own life. I'm like, what? Like, oh, that floored mm -hmm. me, dude. Because of all the people you would expect to have that kind of thing happen to them, he was the least person that right. I would have thought. Right. Because, because you know, you're saying earlier that you met him and, you know, clearly I've met him. And it's just the energy that just, you know, he put off never made me think of someone that, you know, would do that to themselves at any point in time. Like, he loved being him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, there was no, it never felt like there was any sort of, uh, <clears throat> like, like he didn't like it. There was no, uh, there was no sort of sense of, I'm tired of this shit attitude from him. Mm -hmm. And I know that he was working on a movie called Legend of the White Dragon. And uh, he was, he kind of uh, made an announcement that he was stepping away from Power Rangers. Like, um, you know, kind of taking a break from really doing projects and, and, and making any more appearances because he had made sporadically throughout the, the shows, mm -hmm. you know, uh, have you 30 year. I, I've, I saw the one where it was like a big crossover episode. That was kind of cool. Well, okay. So there was I've seen a few uh, far between. So there's this one called Forever Red. And like, I mean, oh, yeah, the, that one Red Ranger twice. And I think they had him stick with zeo for this one as opposed yeah to he was the zeo ranger there yeah. yeah and um what it was is they got this team of like 
all these different Red Rangers together for I think it was the 20th anniversary Power Rangers, mm-hmm. and that was that's what I've actually seen, and it was pretty cool. And the whole t- time, him and Jason are like, <laughs> "I'm the best Red Ranger." No, I'm a better Red Ranger. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, which is great. But then another one that they did because because he did come back for like the entire series of, and see that's the thing is that but. I don't even remember if it was the Disney era of Power Rangers or not. It was Dino something. Dino Thunder. Like, and he was there for Dino that. Thunder. Yeah, he was, you know, he was the doctor because they were all he was Dr. Oliver. Tommy Oliver. He was a paleontologist. Yeah. I kind of watched so, some of that too, I think. Yeah, and he was the Black Ranger in that one. And there was this whole yeah. really cool episode where he had to like fight the white red the white ranger, the red zero ranger, the green ranger. Uh-huh. And you know, to like inner turmoil or some shit like that. But yeah. uh, super hyper mega force, as big of a mouthful as that is, <laughs> that was another like big series that they did. Um, uh-huh. Where like the whole previous super mega force and then super hyper mega force was the second season of it. Uh huh. They got to use old teams' powers and sometimes had old rangers come back. And yeah. it culminated in this big Lord of the Rings style yes. Power Rangers versus the Machine Empire. And that's yes. another one that I also watched. I'm like, Power Rangers is like this again, huh? And it was pretty cool. Yeah. But there was a lot of stuff like a lot of inconsistencies. Like it showed this, this they're doing this, you know, montage of P- Power Rangers in their civilian forms, you know, helping people out. <laughs> and like comes across this car wreck and saves this lady by extending Saba to her. And it's like, where, <laughs> where the, where did you get that from? Because later <laughs> on during the big fight, he's the green dragon Zord ranger. And I'm like, you don't have that power anymore. That power literally <laughs> ceased to the, be. The power coin got destroyed, right? Yeah, or some dude, shit like that. Like, yeah. What is going on here? I don't care. I'm enjoying the shit out of it. Yeah, it's fun. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Right. So yeah. it was it was cool to go back and watch them. Like it wasn't anything I was watching for seriousness. I mean, oh no shit. Yeah. You know, I mean, clearly, like I definitely framed the shot and then didn't even think until after we started recording that my movie Rangers fell over. But to show like my Power Ranger shelf that I have back there, you know, I've yeah. got the Mighty Morphins, I've got the Turtle Morphins, I got the movie Rangers. Uh, an old Tommy shelf. Uh, the only ones I don't have is the red Turbo Ranger because they haven't made it, and uh, uh-huh. the, the black Dino whatever Ranger because they haven't made that. And then uh, that yeah. top shelf, I got the Dragon Zord. Yeah, um, Dragon Zord baby. A buddy right now is printing me uh, a stand for this dagger. Nice. And then I also have. His, yeah, uh, baby, the Power gold. Morpher. It's specifically the gold one too. The gold the one, yeah. yeah. Tommy's, so, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I think I even remember when I bought this and posted it on Facebook that the Toys R Us uh, on Tenth Street in Indy had them, and you were like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, <laughs> I, think I think I, think I, I bought it. one that same day or some shit. Yeah, I mean, the Toys R Us, and I got. Well, I have it somewhere. It's in storage, but like, yeah, you wouldn't believe how much they're going for in this. Oh, and I that's believe. Another thing. It it absolutely disgusts me. How yeah, much yeah, 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 Tommy yeah. Oliver merchandise went on sale in the following weeks. And on one hand, there's people that are like, oh, man, I need this now. But on the other hand, it's the people that are profiting off of it that makes me just like, ew, dude, why? But it's kind of like, you know, if you wanted it, you should have gotten it before now type of thing. Like, it's been out there. Um, I don't know why everybody just kind of jumped to like, oh, this person's dead. And it's a phenomenon that you see when someone. Of course. Uh, you know ceases to be is that there's always like a big uptick in their memorabilia and it's like that kind of feels greasy you know um yeah no i get it it's that's um like i have the first episode he was in in the green ranger saga it's sealed on vhs sealed on vhs yeah and that thing is going for like almost 150 dollars on ebay if not more and i'm just like i'm good like mm-hmm. i i don't i don't need to make money that bad like I, yeah. I don't like to sell my collectibles because they're they're mine. They're, and yeah, I had exactly. them before the person died. So like, you know. I mean, once once I ever end up getting this room settled, you know, I'm gonna end up doing my MTV crib style video of it. <laughs> like I have so many things and it's things that I love, you know. Like there's a lot of the same thing. Uh, I've got a Batman shelf, I've got a Ninja Turtles, a shelf that is all Ninja Turtles of different types and varieties, you know. Um 
but then I've got like theme shelves too. Like I've got a '90s theme shelf and an '80s yeah. theme shelf. You know, yeah. the '90s theme shelf has Stone Cold Steve Austin giving Vince McMahon a stunner. <laughs> I love it. Um, and the Tick, you know. Nice. But uh, do I have any Power Rangers over? There? I have. Yeah, I have the Red Ranger over there. But uh, you know, it's 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 the feel. It's it's basically just like one of those things that it's this guy touched all of our hearts so hard uh for multiple generations there are so many little brothers and little sisters that got into power rangers after us mm-hmm. and they were like yeah. oh tommy's the leader and it's yeah. like yeah tommy's the leader because he was for multiple generations absolutely you know yeah. um yeah no, he's just gone. And, and like you were saying earlier, people pointed a lot of fingers too. Did you hear the bullshit that was being slung at Hasbro? No. What happened with that? Okay. Oh, I didn't so, hear about the Hasbro stuff. What happened there? Okay. So as uh, I don't know if you know or not, but Hasbro now like actually owns Power Rangers. Like they own Power. Rangers. Yes. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, they definitely made sure that like they've got the Lightning series, and yeah. they're going through and they're remaking everything under the new Hasbro era. So like if it was a toy that you used to have, guess what? They're making it again, but this time it's better because it's Hasbro when they're making it. So Oh you know, God, okay. Yeah, fuck you, Bandai. Right. You know, every everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> but uh <laughs> they I guess Jason David Frank went to them and was like, hey I'm I'm ready for whatever. Like I'm I'm your you know loyal so- soldier in the brand of Power Rangers like yes yeah, sure, let's do it. And they were like, you're just a guy who used to wear a green costume on TV. We don't need you. And he was pretty vocal about like that happening. And that's, that's kind of why he's like, cool. Wow. I'm not going to be all over anymore. Like, fuck it. And then they went a step further. And in the comic book series that is apparently canon, I guess, uh, some new guy comes in as the green power ranger again. And it's like, how it doesn't even need to make sense. Granted, I'm I'm guilty of not actually reading the comics right now. I didn't know that. Wow. Dude, there's like six different series. There's Go Go Power Rangers. Yeah, I have some of them. Power yeah. Rangers, adjectiveless Power Rangers. Yeah, there's, yeah. I've yeah. got the turtle crossover. <laughs> I, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, Has- Hasbro killed JDF. Let's turn on Hasbro. And it's like, no, no, no. Dude, that's the problem. Uh, we live in a society yeah. where we want to always have to point the finger at somebody. And when yeah. something bad happens to a person or a place or whatever, the the initial feeling is, who can we blame? Who can we yeah. put all this on? Who can we point the finger to? And, of course, when JDF passed away, it was, it was his wife. Oh, well, I'm sure she did yeah. this and that. And there was, like, a rumor going around about how he got served divorce papers at a con mm-hmm. in Austin, Texas. I don't know if that's true or not. And then there was like people flooding Tammy's um, mm-hmm. Instagram when she had put up her condo- you know, like her uh, a picture of her and him together, saying that oh, you know, we tried to work it out. And everybody was like, yeah, and you're probably the one that did it to him too, and all this. And it's like, why do people do this? Like, right? Like, that is something regardless that not- of how they were feeling, she just lost yeah, her like, husband. Like, like he would not want that. Like, yeah. at all on anyone and so the thing is is like i find that to be very disgusting for people to do is you want to go and i and i kind of get the anger Mm -hmm. but at the same time i'm not one to be so upset that i'm gonna go and like immediately rush to the internet and find a person to blame and say you were the one that caused jdf to uh take his own life and it's just like, but that's the internet, and that's what they do. And unfortunately, is they they want mm-hmm. to rush and point the finger at someone. And it's like, why it's can't we just machine. like, why can't we just like grieve, and mm-hmm. why can't we just collectively be there for each other instead of feeling like we have to collectively go and uh, be a mob, an evil, angry mob at somebody and, and and point the finger at them? Like that's not how we need to be as a fandom. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm not a big part of that fandom anymore, because like I said, I don't really, I do not, um, I don't delve into Power Rangers anymore. I, I, I collect, but I only collect Power Mighty Morphin MMPR, stuff. MPR, yeah. So like, Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't get into like the, the SPD or whatever they were, the Time Force, the nope. Dino Thunder, the, 
super mega, whatever. I don't, I just don't get into that. And, uh, I know a, I have a friend of mine who he does and he actually, you know, uh, he actually is a uh, representative for some of the Rangers. Like he's their handler and stuff. He's their agent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he was even very disappointed to see that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't want to see these other people like Amy Jo Johnson. I don't know if you saw her video mm-hmm. she put out the, the day of. She went like live on Instagram the night of mm-hmm. and she was, was just like crying a mess. And that Dude. almost made me cry. Like watching that. I was like, yeah, yeah. like. And uh, because, you know, I'm sure everybody had a crush on her, you know, when they were young and stuff, the Pink Ranger. And Mm. uh, but, you know, to see her just being so torn up over her friend passing away. And I don't want to I don't want these people to when they go to cons, be the target of someone like, you know, well, you know, if you had done this more, you wouldn't. You know, I don't I I hope I hope that that doesn't happen because. Yeah. Uh, I know, I know JDF was going through a lot, like already, like, I I don't know if you remember when uh, someone at a con tried to kill him. Do you remember that whole thing? Oh, shit. I had forgotten about that. He had someone at a convention that actually Mm -hmm. planned to take his life. Like Mm -hmm. uh, they, they dressed up in like cosplay and somehow their guns got through the weapon check somehow. I don't know how that Mm -hmm. happened. And they had like a note written that they were like there to solely like kill him. So, I mean, I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. I'm sure he that took a toll on his emotion because yeah. I mean, imagine like you you are the very legend of Power Rangers, and knowing that someone was a fan of yours that wanted to try to murder you, like that's got right. a lot on you mentally too. I, I know it did because I watched things about it that mm-hmm. he was in interviews he did, and he was blown away. He was like, "Man, I can't believe like someone would want to come and like try to harm me or my family or." Um, especially after all he does for the community and stuff is just right. It's wicked. But, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy that people are so quick to try to blame somebody for what happened. And there's no one person to blame. I'll tell you as a, as a person who has been down that path, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's never one thing. It's never one person. Um, it's it's a it's a multitude of things that lead up to mm-hmm. wanting to do something like that, wanting to take your own life, and has so, and as someone who has attempted that before, it's been a long that's been a long long time ago. Um, it isn't necessarily one thing; mm-hmm. it's a multitude of things yeah. that kind of catch up to you. And uh, you know, when you have a mental illness, um, it's a struggle. It's a daily thing. It's a daily battle. So, I mean, I don't know what – we will never know what specifically um, – you know, we, we won't never know what what's inside of a person's mm-hmm. head the moment that they do that to themselves. Um, but, man, it's a, it's a shame. It I mean, absolutely is. You know, uh, and I cannot stress enough that if you're in that place, uh, talk to someone. Um you know, talk, talk to somebody because um, your, 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 your life is worth it. Yeah. Like it, it, it absolutely is. <laughs> I mean, uh, nobody knows what a person's going through. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't like to air out their stuff, uh, you know, and, and rightfully so. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's part of it is getting over that, you know, yeah. having to let somebody else in. Yeah. And, uh, or, you know, go get some professional help. Help. Mm-hmm. There's also absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually a better thing to do because uh, I think the hardest part about talking to somebody is it's somebody you know and you're afraid of how they're going to judge you for it. Right. And and that sucks. to. I mean, it sucks to say that, mm-hmm. but like at the same time, it's like uh, when you have depression, especially you already sometimes feel like people don't care. So it's hard for a person with depression to just go and reach out to somebody and talk to them. So it, if, if anything talk to a therapist or talk to some, a, a professional um, because they're going to be a neutral party. They don't, they don't know you. They won't know who you are. So it's actually probably even better to get that point of view. Mm. And I know people will say, well, it's their job. They're paid to do that. Look, I've been to therapists. That's not why they do it. These are people that literally care. They got in, they, they, they didn't just wake up in one morning and say, Hey, how can I get money? 
<laughs> yeah. But, so if I'm going to, how can I make really good money? Oh, I, I like know what money. I'll do. I'll be everybody's emotional blanket and get paid mm-hmm. for it. Listen, I've known people that are therapists. That mm-hmm. is not an easy job to have. Uh, and uh, they most certainly don't do it for the money. Uh, mo- mainly. I mean, of course it's their job. It's there's right. money involved, but that is not their motivation to go and sit there and listen to the world's problems and take it one individual at a time. That's not why they do it. They do this because they care and they, they want to be a person for someone who needs a person. And so I cannot stress enough that if you need to speak to somebody, reach out to, uh, you know, you can even call that hotline. They will actually help you give you some really great resources in your area. You can just give them your zip code and all that. They will actually help you find uh, local um, places for therapists and things like that, or groups and things like that to go and talk to. Uh, another form is medicine. Uh, medicine, there's no shame in taking that. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but tr- if you have never tried those avenues, I recommend you do so. But um, you know, uh, because the last thing you want to do is, is take your own life and you don't want to leave the, everybody behind in yeah. that kind of way. And, um, it's just, it's just, it's just so sad that this individual his life is over because of that. I, I, I still can't believe it. It still feels yeah, no, very, yes, unreal very unreal to me especially after going back and watching all these videos and interviews he did. I've been doing that for like the past couple of weeks since he died. I've been watching him. I was just like, man, you watch him. He seems so like enthusiastic and happy mm. and what he's doing. And, but you know, that doesn't, that, that can be a very good facade too. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, a, it's a mask, you know, I mean, you, mm. you, you, you the, what's the, what's a better way to hide behind it than to um, engage in your fans and, and kind of use that as an escape. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I just, uh, you know, I, I always cherish the fond memories I have of Jason Dave Frank, watching him as a kid and Absolutely. seeing the, sh- the shows and uh, the moment I got to meet him was, was something I'll treasure always. And seeing him in person and the way he, um, you know, is with his fans is just incredible. And that's going to be yeah. something that's going to be very, very missed at conventions mm-hmm. is, is that very thing. There's always a line for him. Like, oh man, the no lines are always day, messy. For him, yeah, you know, there's, it's, oh, it's always going on. You know, yeah, it's just, it's just sad because he was such a positive person in the convention community. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like the light to everybody that they needed, and that's what makes this such a devastating loss for people. Is even if you weren't a hardcore Power Rangers fan, you knew of him because he was at a con. Right. Like you, you couldn't miss his lines because like you said, they were they were massive. massive. People wanted to see him and he wanted to see them and he would stay until he saw everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's how dedicated he was. I mean, he made so much content for people. He made uh, videos and, and he always mm-hmm. was doing stuff for people. He was going to I know recently he was going to like toy stores and stuff and doing meetups and stuff like that, and signing people's yeah. helmets and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, let us know in the comments below. Um, you know, your thoughts on Jason David Frank. Let us know your memories. Share them with us. We would love mm-hmm. to read them. I know we would both love to read those things. You know, if you've had oh, a yeah. good memory or two, even if you haven't met him, let us know your memories of uh of Jason David Frank in the comments below and um share those with us. I love to read those. And then yeah. as I said before, if you need help, uh you're in a dark place. Um, <clears throat> once again, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. There's going to be a link to that, or there's going to be a phone number below. It's 800 number. It's free. They're open 24-7. They will answer your phone call and take the time that you need um, to talk to them about it. And they'll also provide you some really great resources as well. Um, but other than that, uh, I think that's all the time we got today for this episode. Uh, I want to thank you, Josh, for uh, being with me here on this episode. I appreciate Absolutely. it, as always. And... Um, Thank you guys for watching our show and supporting us. We do appreciate that very, very much. And we will see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys.